talent that's on the Major League Wrestling shows, you guys really have put together a mix of veteran talent, young talent, and the quality of the production is really good, and the fans that are going out there are seeing it. When you all are coming together to put the show together, what are your goals? Our goal is to put together the, the best wrestling show that we can. I know that sounds really simplistic, but that's, that's the beginning, middle, and the end. It is get incredible talent uh, both uh, behind the scenes, and we, we have a murderer's row of individuals who are working with us, including Nelson Swegler, who was you know involved in the very first WrestleMania and was was working. He was he was Kevin Dunn before there was Kevin Dunn. So he he he's forgotten more about pro wrestling than I think everybody else has in terms of production. Uh, we actually just brought on board Bruce Pritchard, who is going to be working with us as a as a producer. We have another gentleman, Sean O'Hare, who is working as a as a producer with us, who does production work for, for Microsoft and has worked in MMA for for years. Uh, Charlie Brzez is our camera guy, and this guy was the camera guy for ECW for almost their entire run. And he's a, he's a consummate professional, but he's a wild man. He is literally, whatever it takes to get the shot, he's like, if they gotta shove me over and I gotta take a bump and hold the camera, I'm gonna do it. And it is like, it's like pure guerrilla filmmaking. Like you can put him in a war zone, he's gonna get the shot for you. And he's, in, he's out there working, working his ass off and it's absolutely incredible. Um, the talent that we're working with in terms of wrestlers are, Established guys who deliver week in and week out whenever whatever we ask them for. Guys like MVP, guys like Low Key, guys like Jimmy Havoc, who have been, uh, you can't say enough about how amazing they are. And then working with younger talent. Some guys who have not really gotten the, the national platform exposure that they deserve. And for some of them, it's their first time working in the style that we operate in, which is very much a WWE style. We, we do... You know, a full day of, of pre-tapes, which can be which can be grinding, you know, a grind for you. We're using the same layouts that we used back in WWE. It is as close to what Stanford was was producing uh, as it gets on a on a smaller scale, but by no means a lesser quality scale. And we have our, our shows up. Uh, some of them are up on VOD. Some of them are up on YouTube. If you like wrestling, you're you're going to love our, our our product. We're not putting anything out there that insulting your intelligence. We're not putting anything out there that is uh, a lesser show or overly complicated for you to jump in on. You're just going to watch it. You're going to get all different kinds of wrestling. There, There's the, the Lucha Libre guys that we had here. We had uh, Penta L Zero and Ray Phoenix put on an unbelievable match a couple months ago. And every show we try to spotlight some of the Lucha guys. Uh, we have a guy named Barrington Hughes who uh, he was actually at the, uh, the wrestling event this week. He's 468 pounds of pure charisma, which is, um, I know that sounds like a, like a cheesy tagline, but it's just, it's just kind of the truth. Uh, he's like a giant junkyard dog where the audience just gravitates to him, and he's just amazing super heavyweight. Uh, at our main event of our next show, we're crowning our first world champion, which is going to be between uh, Shane Strickland and Matt Riddle. And those guys are pure athletes, uh, every match that they've had building up to it have been have been great. Uh, Shane Strickland is a, is a really special talent. I think this guy is going to be uh, the, the future of this business. Um, I think everybody knows how great Matt Riddle is. And then the, the last guy that I'm, I'm obligated to plug because he's the most fun guy to hate. And he's probably, I, I'm guilty of probably him, him being my favorite character, is Maxwell Jacob Friedman, who's, who's been in the business for two years now. And is the, some of the best elements of what you're seeing right now from The Miz, you're seeing out of this guy. And he just, it's, it's so natural and so effortless for him. He's, he's our one percenter. Uh, he's such a loathsome individual. And it's great because the fans, when he first comes out, when he first comes out, uh, they, they like to be kind of smart and they're like, oh, you know, this is kind of fun. And then he gets under your skin and you really want to see this guy get beat up. And that's something that sometimes you're, you're missing in wrestling. And he's able to do it really, really well. That 
that's interesting. I mean, the talent you mentioned, and it's just fun and learned listening to you talk about all these different personas, not only in front of the camera, but behind the scenes. And like you said, a dream team put together. Court Bauer, Mr. St. Laurent, you, so many others that are there. Robert, how is it working MLW and working with the Panthers and just trying to fit everything in so you're able to do both? And I'll also ask you this, what does an attorney for a professional sports team, what are some of his duties and obligations without without having to, to go into details about certain things? Sure. So my, my primary uh, job passion uh, in life is, is working here for the Florida Panthers as, as the in-house counsel. It was um, when I left WWE, I left WWE to go to law school specifically to get uh, a position as an in-house counsel for a professional sports team. There were, there were two dreams I had in life. It was to work for WWE and to be in-house counsel for a pro sports team, which both are kind of crazy, lofty dreams to have, but you know, you, you put your nose to the grindstone and, and it's very achievable. And I grew up five minutes down the road from, from the bb and Center and grew up with the Panthers back at the Miami Arena. So this is the very definition of a dream job. Um, the, the balance is for MLW, we do a taping uh, in Orlando once a month. So I, I go up there for, for two days and, and help those guys out. The rest of the time is I'm here. And my day-to-day -day job, there, there's no two days that are the same. And I think that's part of the reason why I absolutely love this job. When you are in-house counsel for a pro sports team and for an arena, uh, it is a 24-7 job. It is very much the definition of being a Swiss Army knife attorney. Uh, one day you might be doing contracts with major Fortune 500 companies who are coming in here as sponsors. The next day it might be working on uh, building development issues uh, that we have here because you know, this is a very large facility and there's everything from we've upgraded our Wi-Fi to a few years ago we put in new flooring to any number of smaller construction projects that are being done that they need legal to kind of jump in on um, to being sort of a catch-all. You know, when, when you are an attorney and you have that specialized background, you're, you're really good at being a problem solver and you're, you're sort of taught a different way to think. And I've had the, the privilege and honor of being here for seven years so far and have a really good sort of base and, and understanding of all sorts of weird and interesting things that happen here. So I'm able to give a different perspective on uh, some, some potential marketing things or, or, or sales issues or just sort of general decisions for the company. And it's been, uh, it's been really awesome to, to get to do. And there's no other job in the world where you know, you get here in the morning, you're working in your office all day, you're, you're, you're doing contracts, you're on calls, and then that night you get to stick around and go watch a hockey game. And it's part of your job. That's, that's sort of an embarrassment of riches right there. That makes it great. You get, it's not even work at that point. It, it depends on how close the game is. Because when it's, when it's close and there's about three minutes to go, that's more stress than I think I feel uh, during my actual day. <laughs> now with WWE working for the Panthers getting your law degree did another dream for you was working with Jerry McDivitt no 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 no, <laughs> no. so you didn't want to go that realm that's actually right the w, one of the WWE's lead, or the WWE's lead attorney actually but you no know, no inclination right of working for WWE in a, in a legal capacity so Part of what got me interested in sort of the intellectual property elements of law was when the WWE lost the name WWF. And I, I really got sucked into how interesting that was. And then working there and dealing with music rights issues and, and logo issues and things like that, you really got an appreciation of what they do. But uh, being, being, being Vince's attorney uh, professionally would be... A lot, a lot of interesting pressures. I remember I think it was 20, by WrestleMania 24 when the pyro went off into the crowd, uh, just dealing with all kinds of issues like that. Yeah, in Orlando in the upper deck. Yes, I remember being at that show and seeing that and thinking, well, I'm really glad I'm not their, their attorney. Oh. Um, I, not to mention the fact I love living in South Florida. And I think, you know, as, as interesting as Connecticut was to live, you get spoiled when you're down here. I've been watching all the snow up in the Northeast, and the worst that happened was it was uh, 53 degrees this morning. It's, it was absolutely beautiful, and this is 
to me the best place to, to you know raise a family in and, and live in and uh, if I was uh, up in Stanford I wouldn't be able to do any of that I just think it's amazing what what he's been able to do as an attorney. I think it's it's a forty eight hour a day job actually, but wow, he's been incredible up there working with them and all. So I did, I had to bring it up though because you have the law, law background now, and WWE also has its incredible legal department and all. Oh, they they definitely do, and and it's it's a little different because they're they're working in the corporate building up in up in Stanford. Uh, it's like we'd be like working for any other sort of firm. Uh, my office is the BB&T Center. Uh, I'm standing right now looking at the ice, which is a pretty cool view to have, you know, five feet from your office. So the atmosphere of working here is, it's really special and it's really interesting and it's something that not a lot of attorneys or a lot of people get 